I think nutrition is the cornerstone of longevity medicine. It's really above many of the other hallmarks. Poor nutrition, not enough of the good stuff, too much of the bad stuff. My personal longevity program, how have I stayed healthy at 63 years old? Well, many wonder how I've managed to stay strong and healthy and doing all the stuff I do at 63. While well, many of my peers are kind of getting a little chubby, kind of winding down. You know, I'm you know, helicopter skiing, improving my tennis game every day, building more muscle, outperforming my 30-year-old friends, riding my bike up the mountain, lifting heavier weights. Uh, you know, how do I do that? Well, knowing all the possibilities to slow or reverse aging, you know, can sometimes be a little overwhelming or depending on your personality, a little exciting. How do you figure out what's best for yourself? You have to choose what resonates with you. You have to incorporate what works in your life on a regular basis. You have to build new habits. You can't do everything all at once. But over time, you can explore a lot of different things that are going to help support and enhance your health and well-being and help you have a long, active, vibrant life. So I, remember, I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been learning and incorporating different things. And I've sort of come up with what works for me. But I'm going to share with you what the science... And, what, and these are science-backed interventions that I focused on. So the first is... You know, what do I eat? Because I think nutrition is the cornerstone of longevity medicine. Uh, one of the hallmarks, deregulated nutrient sensing, and is, is really above many of the other hallmarks that drives them. Poor nutrition, not enough of the good stuff, too much of the bad stuff. So I follow what I call the Pegan diet, which is really a food is medicine approach. It's plant-rich diet. It's high in phytochemicals. It's high in the right amount of protein for my body uh, and age, which we need more as we get older to build muscle. I use my healthy aging shake pretty much with an hour of exercise to build muscle. And that's in the book. The recipe for it has got goat whey and all kinds of other goodies, uh, cocktails of things that are really powerful for upregulating my mitochondria, for building muscle. Uh, and so I encourage you to check that out. Uh, exercise, what do I do for exercise? I mean, I, I wish I could do more. It's not that I like to do more, but I probably do you know, four to six days of aerobic training, probably half an hour interval training. I do different things. I do road biking, mountain biking, tennis, hiking, swimming. And then I use a, a strength training program that's based on uh, Tom Brady's program, TB12, which I like because as I get older, you know, I think I can, I can, you can injure yourself with weights and I use some weights, but not too much, but I use the bands and I can travel with them everywhere. And I, uh, there's an app you can use. You can buy the bands. It's TB12, I think, is the app, TB12 Sports. Um, and, I, and I do that three or four times a week for 30 minutes. And it's incredible the change I've seen in my body. I do hot yoga whenever I can get a hot yoga studio, vinyasa yoga a couple of times a week, and stretching every day a little bit. Just keep flexible. Uh, sleep, I always try to get seven, eight hours sleep. I usually get to sleep by 10, uh, up by, um, by six or seven. And I make sure I, I take magnesium at night. I wear eye shades. I have earplugs. I make sure I, I really uh, make a really quiet uh, sleep environment. I also track my sleep with uh, my Aura Ring, uh, Apple Watch. It's really great tools now to track what's going on. And I can see, oh, I had a late meal because I was busy and my sleep was crap. Or I decided to have a glass of wine and, oh, boy, my heart rate didn't lower. So I, it kind of clues me into what my body's doing and and sort that out. Uh, how do I deal with stress? Because, you know, just like everybody else, I have a lot of things that are going on and get stressed by different things. And uh, and just life itself is stressful these days. Uh, but I try to meditate at least once or twice a day. I try to do breath work, uh, you know, whether it's just deep breathing or more expanded breath work practices. I try to get as much time in nature and wilderness as I can because that, that really is my medicine. Nature is my medicine. And then community is medicine. So I make sure I commit to making time with friends, uh, people I love, my family. Really, really important. Uh, try to get a massage once a month or more if I can. <laughs> um, I actually got this Theragun thing, which is great. And it's you know probably a cost of a couple of massages, but then you have it and it's like you can do it on yourself or if you have a partner, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, I also practice hormesis, which I, I think is a key part of longevity. So I try to not eat, um, give myself like at least 14 hours between dinner and breakfast, which gives my body a chance to do autophagy, clean up at night. Uh, at least three or four times a week, but usually at least 12. I never eat, but, you know, within 12 hour between dinner and breakfast. Um, I make sure I include phytohormesis plants like Himalayan terry buckwheat and various kinds of, you know, green tea extracts and products. So I just include phytohormesis chemicals from food, which I talk about in the book. Um, and I also use hot and cold. So after this podcast, I'm going to go work out. I'm going to do some interval training on uh, my bike inside because it's winter. I'm going to do a, a half hour strength training. I'm going to 
put on my steam. I'm going to do a steam. Then I'm going to do an ice bath. It's very cold in the winter because my water is cold up here in the Berkshires. But uh, and that's that's I'm really looking forward to that. And that's, that's going to be my sort of pre-lunch workout. And uh, and I, I just I felt I felt like I get so uh, energized by that. And I do it whenever I can, uh, and probably when I'm home almost every day. I have red light therapy. I have a machine at home which gives me red light therapy that helps me rejuvenate my mitochondria. I talk about that in the book. I use ozone therapy uh, when I can. I have uh, an office where I'm lucky, lucky I can do it, but I do it tune up with ozone therapy. I use blue blocker glasses at night, uh, which get rid of the blue light at night. I, uh, I've used hyperbaric oxygen in the past. I wish I had one at home, but if they're expensive, uh, maybe they'll come down in price, but I, I definitely love that. I also have something called Cell Gym, which is a hypoxy machine, but you can also use a mask, like a hypoxia mask for 50 bucks uh, you can get online. So there's all these incredible techniques to stress your system. Hormesis is little stresses that uh, don't kill you, but make you stronger, whether it's you know short periods of fasting, whether it's exercise, whether it's hot and cold therapies, whether it's ozone or red light therapy or hyperbaric oxygen, all really help. All right, now what do I take in terms of supplements? Well, um, I always have the basics, right? Vitamin D, fish oil, a multivitamin. I take a B complex for homocysteine because of my genetics. I have a high homocysteine, which means I can't methylate, which is important. I take a little magnesium at night and I use basically a multivitamin for the gut, which is called Gut Food, a product that I created with my team. Just go to gutfood.com. You can learn more about it. It's basically prebiotics, probiotics, and polyphenols. And then, you know, I'm a kind of a geek, so I kind of pack in my longevity stack. I take NMN, about 900 milligrams a day, uh, which is a great dose uh, of NMN uh, with a bunch of other things in it. I take uh, HTB Rejuvenate, uh, which is basically from Big Bold Health. Uh, it has quercetin, bioflavonoids. So quercetin is really great for longevity. I use combinations of supplements, senolytics. I call senolytics with curcumin and green tea and uh, fisetin and sterostilbene, which is like a resveratrol product. I take something which has got broccoli extract in it called uh, Oncoplex. And I also use MitoPure or Renewal from Pure Encapsulations, which is basically a compound that comes from pomegranate that helps build muscle and creates mitophagy. Uh, send in a little creatine or amino acids to help build muscle in my shake. So that's kind of my stack. It's a lot. I don't expect everybody to do that, but I'm, I'm very committed to this. So it, it, you can kind of look at my book and I kind of guide you on what makes the most sense, what you can start with. It's pretty simple. So, uh, and then I kind of explored a lot of advanced therapies. I'm sort of really curious about the space and I've invested a lot in my own health. I'm not quite like this guy who spent $2 million <laughs> on reversing his biological age every year. I I can't have that uh, budget for that, but it's pretty cool. And I've used myself as a guinea pig from stem cells to exosomes. And I've had many issues. I've had uh, autoimmune disease. I've had chronic injuries. I've had mold toxicity, mercury poisoning, Lyme disease, back stuff. So I, I've learned how to use these both for general wellness, but also to really heal these chronic issues. Uh, and remember, these are things that I, I you know, chose to do, knowing the potential risks and, and the more research is needed. And you know, each of us has different appetites for risk and exploration and budget, but uh, I've used peptides, exosomes, stem cells, um, plasmapheresis, all kinds of cool stuff to clean your blood. And they're great. Uh, and I, I've noticed huge differences. And um, and also, you know, I'm lucky because uh, one of the other key things that have to do with longevity is meaning and purpose. And that has been a real gift that I've been able to, through my own suffering, been drawn to learn and teach about functional medicine. And that it's given my life a lot of meaning, a lot of purpose, and, uh, and to serve others as a doctor, an author, host of this podcast, to try to bring information for people. I also have a nonprofit where I, I try to change the food system, which I know might be silly, but somebody got to do it. So I have a nonprofit called the Food Fix Campaign that actively works to create a healthier, more equitable food system and uses, you know, food as medicine approach uh, to change policy and, and focus on regenerative agriculture uh, to change how we grow food as well. So uh, it's really important. And then I've also worked really hard on my mindset and mental health and um, work with life coaches and friends and explore different spiritual traditions. Uh, every week I have a men's group. I, I gather with six of my closest friends. We've had been friends for almost 40 plus years. And we, we just meet every week and hang out and uh, check in and, and really you know, it's really beautiful to be seen and be known uh, in that way. So I encourage people to like 
make an investment in time with, with the people you love and care about. So I've been cultivating a, a community for a long time and I have a beautiful community of friends and colleagues. And so I'm blessed in that way, but it, it's taken work and investment in time. So I encourage you to make that effort because, you know, that is a huge factor in longevity is meaning and purpose and community. We've talked about how we need to reframe our approach to aging, the way we currently view the last bit of our lives, the last half or quarter of our lives is based on this kind of wrong framework of inevitable gradual decline that's filled with pain and fragility and medications so many we can't keep track of, a loss of independence. And all of that is not normal aging. All of that is abnormal aging. So we have to get into this paradigm shift, which is giving us a very different approach to aging, not as a normal consequence of getting older, but as a disease. And this is now recognized as a disease by the WHO. I think the American Medical Association and the coding is not quite there yet, but there's a conversation in the longevity science world about how what we see as normal aging, all these chronic diseases of aging are actually abnormal aging. They're not things that are inevitable and they're related to the underlying causes of the abnormal aging, which are called hallmarks. And we cover these hallmarks of aging, the things in our biology that go wrong that make us age faster. Uh, we talked about how do we address the hallmarks of aging, the foods we need to eat and what we need to avoid, the lifestyle practices that we should prioritize and the things we should get rid of <laughs> and the importance of exercise and what kind of exercise to feel young and also really remain independent, strong, functional. We talked about uh, the new frontier in longevity medicine, all the advances in longevity innovations like stem cells and exosomes and peptides and and there's lots more, sure, I, I promised uh, there's more I cover in the book. Things that are, are really going to change everything we ever known and experienced about getting older in our last part of our life. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. And understanding the body is a network. It's basically a network of networks. And so these hallmarks of aging are parts of these biological networks. And there are often themes you might have heard about in functional medicine, like inflammation, the microbiome, and mitochondria. Uh, and there's and there's more, right, in, in medicine.